Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be going over what is known as the life cycle of a React component. This is a very critical thing to understand and will help in our next video when we talk about the use effect hook. Now, when I say life cycle, I'm referring to the three stages that happen in a React component. Number one, when you first render that component. Number two, if you make any updates to that component. And number three, if you were to go ahead and no longer show that component, which is known as unmounting. Just as a reminder, if you find value in these videos, please consider liking, leaving a comment, or subscribing. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm to get these videos out there to more and more people, and I read every single comment, and I love interacting and getting your feedback from every single one of my videos. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. The lifecycle methods of a React component is sort of poorly documented, especially because most of the documentation that talks about lifecycle is completely class-based. And you'll see here all the examples until you get to use effect is completely um, class based and not functional and by the time you start using use effect you sort of have to have a baseline understanding about how the life cycle works anyways and that's what this video is for so generally there are going to be three main phases of a react component that you're going to want to understand and take advantage of number one is when you first decide to show that react component onto your page and that is known as mounting this will be the first time if the component is not already on the page that it gets rendered and shown. It will run once for every time that the component is rendered onto the page because it is known as literally um, what happens when you first render the component. It is known as mounting and that is the official word that we use for it in React. Now the next phase you're going to have to know about is the updating phase. This will happen on a couple of different times. Number one, if a prop that comes into your component changes, it will cause the component to re-render and that is known as an update. Or number two, which is the other main phase, if the component itself has a state variable that is updating and that will cause the component to re-render and quote, update as well. And the last and final phase you should know about is when you no longer want to show a React component on the page, and that is known as unmounting. This is for whenever you hide the component, or let's say you go to a different page where the component is no longer shown. Now, I have a nice little example set up for you. So let me briefly go over what this example is, and then we'll look at the component lifecycle inside of it. Now, the code is not too important. All you have to know is we have two components, our app component and then a count component that calls our app component and uh, is nested inside of our app component, as you can see. So if I were to, for example, I have in our app component just an H1 tags that has, um, you know, our app, and then I have a button. And when you click that button, it will show the counter component. And you can see the counter component is a very basic component. It just has, you know, a title that says counter, the current count. And then if I click this, it will increment the count. Now, if I were to go ahead and hide the counter, you'll see it's no longer there. So let's look and inspect element and see what we have going on in HTML um, right here. So I'll go ahead and I'll highlight our app. And you can see here right now, the only HTML we are showing is an H1 tag that says our app and then a button that says show counter. And let me see if I can zoom in just a bit to make it easier to see. And if I were to now go ahead and click show counter, you will see that counter component enters the mounting phase because it is the first time that we are going to see um, it showing up on our DOM. And notice this mounting phase happens every single time I um, take away the counter and re-show it. So now if I were to go into this div, you will see here this is all the code for the counter component. Now let's look at the updating phase of this counter component. If I were to go into here, you would see the current count is zero, but every time I click increment count, it changes and increments by one. That is known as updating the component. The component will technically re-render, but not remount to show the new count. Now when I click hide count, you'll see all of the HTML code that's um, has our actual counter code will now go away and hide and you'll see here it is no longer there and the component is now has now been unmounted and is no longer mounted so the next time I want to show that component it will be mounted and if we for were for example to um, let's say add another counter component that shows unconditionally you will see that it has its own life cycle that is not 
found, whoops, I actually put that in the button. <laughs> um, you will see that it has its own life cycle that is not bound to this other counter's life cycle. So let's get rid of this and you'll see if I click hide counter, it will only hide um, this bottom counter, or sorry, this, uh, I guess because it's above it, but let's move it to be above just to make it a bit easier. You'll see here, if I click hide counter, it will only show um, and hide this bottom counter and it will not affect the other instance of the counter component that has been rendered and mounted as soon as we refreshed it. And because it's not hooked up to this show counter logic, um, as you can see here, it won't be unmounted or anything like that. So each instance of a component has its own life cycle that it goes through. And that's very important to understand as well. Now let's go into the basics and let's dive into when a component will render. So to do that, we're going to be looking at the use effect hook. Now, my next video is going to be going really in depth with the use effect hook, but I'm going to give you a very high level overview of what it is just for some examples. Now, if you want to use the use effect hook, pretty much all you have to do is import it from React. Let's zoom in here. You can import it from React, just like you would import your use state. And it is essentially going to be this um, uh, function that you pass in another function to. Now let's go ahead and make our code a bit bigger. Um, let's zoom in again. And you can see here, right over here, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this use effect and get rid of the code that they had in here. Now, what this use effect is going to do is essentially, right now, every single time my component updates, it is going to say my component update. Now, a regular use effect will always run once when the component first mounts, and then depending on how you design the use effect, it will run either maybe when it's mounting or it'll even run when it is unmounting. So for example, this use effect right now will run every single time the component uh, updates and every time the component runs. So for example, if I type console.log, we have run the use effect and save it. And now we can go ahead and open our app, open up the console and refresh this. You will see here the first time it mounts and we can go ahead and let's also get rid of that second counter just to make it a bit simpler. So now we're back to just having a counter where I, if I click show counter, it'll open. You can see here, um, if I were to refresh this now, nothing will show up because we haven't even mounted our counter component yet. But if I were to, and maybe it'll be simpler if I open this up, but if we were to click show counter, well, the, count, the counter would mount and our use effect would run because the component has mounted. Now this specific use effect will also run every time the component updates. How do we make the component up update? Well, all we have to do is increase the count. So you can see here, every time I click increment the counter, we will get a new, um, a new console statement saying we have run the use effect. And you can see here I have, let's see, how many do I have now? one, two, three, four, five. If I were to go ahead and click the button that says uh, hide counter, you'll notice it will not run again um, because we haven't configured our use effect to actually um, run on component unmount. Now, if we were to, for example, pass in an empty array after our code here, you will see that this code will now only run if a component mounted, and I'll explain why. If we click show counter, you will see we have run the use effect, but I click increment counter, it's not incrementing at all. And that is because this use effect is now acting as what is known as a component did mount. The reason for that is, you can see here that we have everything we want to run inside of the squiggly braces that comes inside of the function, which is the first parameter of our use effect hook. The second argument of the use effect hook is going to be an array. If this array is not provided, um, it will take it as undefined and your component will run all the time. But what this array does is we are saying we only want to run what is inside of this use effect if the things inside of this array runs. And we'll cover this more in detail. Don't worry if you don't understand that yet. We're, we're gonna cover it in more detail in the next video, but that is essentially what is going on here. So now if I were to, whoops, uh, 
<laughs> okay, I'll add my concept of lock back. We can say the the component has mounted because the only time this is going to run now since we provided an empty ray is when the component uh, has mounted. And like I said, don't worry too much if you don't understand that. We're only using this for uh, purposes to show the life cycle of a, a React component. So if I were to click show counter now, you will see here I get a console log that the component is mounted, but when I increment it, I won't get anything. And now finally, we can go ahead and write something that will also trigger when the component is unmounted. So if I were to, for example, return, and you can uh, go ahead and let's go to the return examples. Uh, unmount. All right, it doesn't look like they have an example here for what happens when it unmounts, but essentially you're going to be returning a function as well. And if I were to console.log, uh, the component has unmounted, you will see that it will run. So let me go ahead and refresh. When I show the component, it will say the component has mounted. And when I hide it, it will say the component has unmounted. So you can see those are the life cycles that this application, that specific counter component is currently going through. Now, <clears throat> that is pretty much it for this lifecycle video. I wanted to make it a bit short. And like I said, we are going to go very in depth with the use effect function in the next video. So don't worry if you didn't understand what was going on. It was just very important that you understood the three phases of the React component lifecycle. As a reminder, if you found value in this video, please consider leaving a comment, subscribing, or liking the video. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And I hope you're all staying safe. I'll see you guys in the next video.